Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. On the series Strategy Game Head, we are looking at a new game, at least on my channel. Out of Battle World War II. So this is the game, as you can tell, about World War II. And it's sort of naval, air, um, land-based um, simulation. So it's kind of a normal strategy game, I would call it, in World War II. Um, it's in the tradition of uh, things like Panzer General. So it's, it's a hex-based tactical game. So I think it fits in very well with this channel. And in many ways it will look very familiar, but I do think it was it's just being brought together in a very nice way. Um, and I think the scenario design is actually quite superb. So yeah, let's dive into that. You can see there are multiple campaigns that you can play over here. Overall the battle uh, the the game is free to play. Uh, but don't turn out just yet. So the only thing that I actually think you can play is the boot camp. Um, if you don't love the free game. Um, and then you have to buy these campaigns and then you can play the campaign. Uh, which I think is honestly quite fair. Right now, I think they are still dis uh, discounted at Matrix Games, uh, which is of course the publisher here, so maybe look at that, maybe not. Um, I think what we would like to do here um, is have a look at Burma Road. So that is the game that, uh, or the little scenario that here that we will be looking at, and it's a somewhat underplayed um, theater of the war, I think. So this is the British fighting um, against the Japanese in the Burma theater, which was quite important for two reasons, because A, it was the it would have been the Japanese access to India, and B, just on the tip of Burma you would have the air service across the hump, which was quite crucial in, in resupplying the Chinese uh, with at least a little bit um, equi of equipment, although it was incredibly in inefficient. But Burma, one of the theatres that was really, really hardly fought, well, <laughs> fighting there was very hard, um, and it's, I think, a little bit underlooked in, in most games. So, yeah, I do like that it's here, and I do like that we get to play as the allies in this game. We're going to launch the game over here, and you can see the various events that we get on this campaign map. So, following increasing tension with the Western powers, Japan has launched a widespread, widespread surprise offensive against its adversaries. British forces, already drained by two years of war with Germany, must now resist the battle-hardened Japanese across Southeast Asia. So, our first uh, campaign over here is going to be in the Operation Krokol, and that is Japanese troops have landed on the Malayan Peninsula as part of their widespread offensive into Southeast Asia. To challenge this invasion, an ad hoc British force has launched a preemptive attack into Thailand, so up over here. You can see that we will be getting uh, various different specializations for our army, we will be getting uh, British forces in our core, we will be able to buy those, um, and there's a difficulty setting as well. I think I'm going to go with Captain, which is in the middle here. Um, I just briefly dabbled in with Colonel, and that is incredibly hard. So, let's start the scenario over here. We are getting a couple of tips over here, and uh, that shouldn't be too bad, but you can already see the, um, the sort of hex-based um, approach that the game is taking. There is the next step, and you can, I think, see the similarity to the old Panzer General uh, games, but again, I think it's very well done. There are special um, units and all of that, so all in all, I think that's very nice. Let's start the mission briefing over here, and we will get a little text-based uh, approach. So, in an effort to challenge and delay the Japanese advance from the beachheads in Malaya, British and Commonwealth forces have been assembled for a preemptive attack through neutral Thailand, so at that point at the very least. We cannot predict how the Thai will react to this violation of their territory, but must be prepared for face-to-face -face resistance from some of their security and police units. Our ultimate objective is to reach the ledge, a narrow road wedged between hills on one side and a river on the other. By blowing up the hillside, this route should be blocked and thus significantly delay the Japanese advance. Further to the west, that's over here, a column of Indian troops is tasked to secure additional Thai border checkpoints. I think they're up over here, yeah. This should prevent the Japanese from using this major roadway for the advantage for, for their advance into Malaya. Finally, a third column is expected to arrive soon on the south, soon on the easternmost road. It is important that, unless our flanks are threatened, each column pursues its own objective. Let's start the game over here, and we do get um, a little overview of our primary and secondary objectives. And you can see what's um, going to happen if we are successful in these things down here. So our mine. Our uh, main um, task is to capture and hold Beton. If we were to get to destroy these um, hillsides over here, we would be getting an elite fighter squadron for the use in the following scenario. If we do get that, I kind of doubt we will. Um, a new unique tank commander might be um, provided if we do attack these Japanese tanks. And if we capture both 
of these te uh, checkpoints, uh, we will be getting a specialization point. I kind of doubt whether that is gonna happen. Right, so let's look at the game. We can zoom in here, so this is again just sort of as you would expect, um, hex based. You can see our units over here, so we've got British engineers, we've got British infantry, we've got more British infantry and British heavy infantry. Uh, all with different uh, abilities and all of that. There's a minefield up over here on this road uh, leading to the top. We, on the other hand, control um, this little town down here, Crow, where there's a couple of um, Indian troops that are not under our control, so I can't click on them, but I can't move them, um, is up over there. And here we've got, well, whatever that is. Right, if we do hit spacebar, you can see the supply system. So basically what it does, I think it's kind of elegant, it just adds up all of the supply that you do have in a certain territory. So over here in this sort of area over here, we've got 10, 40, 20 points. Um, and all of our units are using a varying number of points for their supply. Um, and basically it subtracts that. So you've got this green number over here showing that everything is fine for now. Um, as long as this here isn't interrupted or this here, I think. Good. So we have also 300 monetary points, requisition points, a couple of command points. So this indicates how you can spend your unit. We've basically 10 command points and 300 money. And we can buy various units and I think this will look familiar to some of you as well. We could for example buy a tactical bomber here for 100 quid, but we don't have the three uh, air command points that we'd be needing for that. Basically we don't have any air command points, so that is a bit of an issue. So we do need to buy units and these units will then be with us for the rest of the game, basically. We can also upgrade units, and I think that might sometimes be a very good idea. So for example here we can take this guy here and upgrade him to various different uh, types of units. I think I would very much like uh, to get a couple of Gurkhas over here. You can see they are a little bit better in fighting, uh, but what I most importantly um, think is they are concealable. They're gorilla, so they don't uh, suffer efficiency gain from terrain disruption, and I think that is going to be extremely important. And they're light freight, that is not quite as important, but um, still. I think this is a very decent upgrade here, and that we can grab for our units, and that will make them a little bit better going forward. Other troops here I think I'm fine with, so we don't really need to um, do that. What I kind of would like to buy... What I kind of would like to buy is maybe either an anti-tank gun that could come relatively cheap because we know that we will be facing tanks that's interesting to see that they have more an early con 20 millimeter that's an anti-tank gun anti-air mode oh that's interesting so you are either anti-air or anti-tank you're not very good mind you add fighting against tanks but you might still be quite valuable on the other hand here just the quick firing two pounder would be also kind of nice and this guy does have what anti-air attack off so you only have I don't get the, inf uh, the information point here that's still interesting and you'd be actually quite good against either role. So seeing how we might sometimes actually find tanks and aircraft, I think I'm going to purchase this Erlikon here. And that's going to be useful. It's going to use up four of our deployment points and quite a bit of um, our units. So that we need to be aware of. I'd also like to get a tank. A big, big tank here. Maybe even the Matilda. So you are kind of good against, so let's start with the Crusader, you are a very fast one, you can see the um, little leg symbol down there. So this is 10, this is only 6, this is only 4, so they are progressively getting heavier, uh, but on the other hand, they seem to be getting a little bit better in defending against enemy tanks. Although, it's interesting to see, so the green unit here is defense, and the red one is attack. But it's interesting to see that these guys are not necessarily better at attacking tanks. So maybe this is actually the best one. They're much better at defending, but not necessarily at attacking. So I think this one over here is actually what we're going to take. That basically already eats up nine of our deployment points. So I'm not sure whether we can afford anything else here. Um, and it just doesn't look like it. 
So no, we, all, we are going to have to roll with that. Um, let's place the tank over here. And the Erlikon just behind that. And I think that's alright. And you can switch to anti-aircraft units for now. And that's fine. Yeah, lovely. Very good. Okay, that's it for our deployment points because we don't really have anything else. So let's end the deployment points. Going a little bit out of reminder here. And we will... No, it's actually us starting. So the first thing that we can do, I think, here is the... Clear this minefield here um, of any mines. And then start to advance up over here. And I'm not entirely sure where exactly they will be based. So, and we don't have any recon. Which might have been a little bit unfortunate. But yeah, let's move in our heavy infantry first. I'm having this Thai police here. Um, let's move in an additional unit because we will be able to demonstrate something over here. And that is the use of supporting units. So sometimes you can have these flanking types of attacks and that can be extremely good. Looks like we're winning against these guys over here, which does allow us to move in here. Um, and that we would have to do immediately. Otherwise you can only move or do something else. So I'm kind of tempted to actually move in here with these guys. Get a little bit of a view of what's going on over there. And how about you now? So now I can have a look at this here. So you'd be, I think, very good at attacking land infantry at a very short distance. Is it? No, I think short and then long. So you'd be probably good at um, in, in sort of the open terrain. Uh, which is a bit of an issue. But I suppose I could move you up here. Cross you here. Move in now, uh, but I don't think that's exactly what we need to do. I'm, I'm very much suspecting that there is some some enemy presence right up here, and we can't move anywhere else. And let's actually move here. Oh, no, it looks like there's only some presence over there, which we could or could not immediately engage. We'd be taking some losses, but I think it's well worthwhile to try to it. Yeah. There we go. Slight losses on their side. Uh, let's bring up the Erlikon up over here. Cover our units from an air perspective. And turn over the unit, uh, the turn towards Thailand, the Thai unit. I do think I've turned it down a little bit, right? Uh, in terms of volume. So, sorry, not Thai army, of course, Indian army. This is the Indian army. I think that's one of the reasons why. Sorry, it's is not quite well reported on there with a lot of colonial troops fighting in the US. Quite a bit of people in our guys that are right up in the front. And then we'll need to turn down the volume, I think. So this important column of Indian units has begun their advance towards the Thai checkpoints. They report taking fire from Thai Royal Police units and Japanese aircraft. So the Japanese are already here. Um, and let's get on the audio here and turn down the sound volume quite a bit. So yes, close. There we go. Okay, but let's focus on our guys down here. So firstly, these guys here are whoop, these guys here are a little bit exhausted. So probably we don't want to overdo it with them. Uh, we can have a look at these guys. None of these guys is entrenched, as you could see by this little symbol over here. And this little symbol here is gaining, giving you the efficiency. So most of these guys are relatively fresh and therefore somewhat efficient. Um, but, okay, so you could attack aid now. And that is, I think, because this is somewhat build-up terrain. It's sort of in the middle, so we can't really tell. Okay, but we do have more units, right? So what I suppose what we could try to do is we can't quite move you around over here. But what we could do is move up with these tanks and sort of do a flanking maneuver here. And then come up over here. And are you now supporting? Okay, this way, these guys are supporting because they are not directly adjacent to the tank, um, nor are they adjacent to an enemy unit, whereas this guy is not supported by the tank because the tank is um, close to another enemy unit. So we're going to try to do this attack here first. If I do punch these guys here with the tank, did some damage over there, let's follow up with an attack by the infantry. You can see their symbol here is turned red, and indeed, indeed they are withdrawing, so we can move in. We can't attack again, but at least we did move in uh, somewhat, so that's nice to see. 
We've also got these engineers, and they would be extremely good at defeating any fortifications, which they don't have, so I don't think we necessarily need that. So, I suppose we're going to bring in the... Let's briefly look at these guys. So, you have 10 to 16. You've been doing a lot of damage there, and you guys here have 13. So, a relatively flat amount. So you, I think, are better at close quarter fighting. So I think, at any rate, we could either reinforce you here. We'd probably do that with elite units. It's a little bit more expensive, uh, but usually well worthwhile. Uh, but I think we're going to just withdraw you here for a second. And we'd be doing four damage there, whereas you'd be doing three damage. But you wouldn't take any losses, whereas you would. Okay, so that does settle it. And from my perspective, let's move you here. Let's attack over here, and then do like the attack animation of the engineers. Got this little burning symbol. Let's move you up as well. And then you can come up here and attack these guys. Not getting them to surrender, which is a shame. Um, that's pretty much all right, I guess. Right, we can't really cover everyone in terms of AA, but I'm just going to move probably up here. Yeah, I think that's fine. Right, we don't have any other units, so let's click down that turn. I'm probably going to do the Indians first here. Yeah, they're trying to circumnavigate these, these little area over here. They've killed their first Thai division. Oh, unit. I'm not sure whether this is supposed to represent a division. I think it's a little bit lower. They are engaging this Japanese tank or recon unit, which has withdrawn there to the north, so that's interesting. They are trying to capture this area here, so that's nice. That will give us, I think, some more supply. These guys are trying to flank us and attacking these tanks. We are taking some losses there. High divisions are coming in from the north and putting heavy, heavy resistance on, on the enemy there. Oh, look at that. The Japanese are actually... Oh, and we've got a couple of Australian troops. So the Japanese have actually attacked the... Whoop, come on. Um, have actually attacked the Thai... Uh, units over there, so they are formally at war at this point, and that of course historically uh, made a major difference um, because just this little fighting in the beginning uh, did allow the Japanese to, uh, sorry, the Thai to, to sort of treat themselves as a victim of uh, excess aggression as well, and, and they weren't considered a belligerent in uh, the peace negotiations. Uh, let's try to shoot down this bomber, irrespective of that it's shooting at our enemies least cause some damage over there, which I very much appreciate. And then we probably want to move into here. So we could either move in with the heavy or these guys. Okay, let's move in here first. Yeah, I think I thought so. There, so there are some more units down there. We could attack here. These guys will probably just want to heal up. I think they're pretty much beaten. Then over here we could attack them over there or over there. Difference is we are doing a lot more damage when they are out in the open. Nevertheless, I think this city fighting here is a little bit more important to us. So maybe we want to prioritize that. We could also do a little bombard here with the heavy cav uh, with the heavy infantry. I think we are going to try to do that over here and push up a little bit. I think that's fantastic. So and then we could either go into here. That would be very bloody though. Two against one or just one. Alright, I can't move you so we'll have to be quite careful up there. Because I don't want these guys to engage this one. No, okay, so let's start out here. Hi, police. Only a single damage on their side, two damage on our side. That's not very great. Um, but that should allow us to Follow up a little bit over here. Four damage on them. Two on us. I think that's alright-ish. Yeah, and then we probably do have to attack here. Just so that these guys are weakened and can't really attack this one over there. Do we have any further units? Oh yeah, we do. We have the Australians. So um, that is nice to see. There are a couple of Thai units up there. Um, and I suppose what we could try to do is just at least come up a little bit over here. Yeah, let's try to come up here. Oh, interesting. There is a Japanese aircraft there. Uh, let's attack them from this direction. 
And then attack them from this direction. And then should already give them some pulse. And we are gonna move up this AA gun, and we are gonna target this fighter. Or aircraft. Scout aircraft, maybe. So it's nice that we did take that out. And I suppose... So, I have very, very little hope that we would be getting to this ledge uh, position up there. It just seems too far away. Um, and I just don't think that is quite possible, so... Let's try to come up here. And see whether we can sort of fall into their bags. And we are trying to pick back these guys as well, so that's nice. And that should work out fairly fantastically. We've got a little bit more command points over here, so we could potentially get another unit. And one of the units that I think we could purchase is potentially some artillery. These are all three. We could also just try to get more Gurkhas or even paratroopers. See, airborne, demolitions, concealable, quick entrenchment, light. Are you very good though? So let's compare you towards... No, you are definitely extremely good. Interesting, because you would expect that they are not quite as capable against certain types of units. But they are much more expensive and they are carrying incurring a price of three over here. Interestingly enough, engineers don't seem to... I mean, engineers are fairly good. They are doing shock damage and they are doing fortification reduction. So, compared to these guys, they are a little bit slower. They aren't quite as good as attacking mechanized vehicles, but they are pretty good against infantry. So we could buy one of these and an artillery piece. Yeah, you know what? That sounds very good. So uh, let's buy an engineer. We're going to purchase an for them. So we are going to send them, uh, I guess, up down here. Yep. And then we are also going to purchase an artillery piece. So let's have a look at these guys. So most importantly, I th find is the shock value. Um, other than that, this would be great because it's a mountain gun, and I suppose that would be have. Ah, oh, you don't. Ah, oh, damn. <sighs> okay, so that would be on, uh, the only real viability here, because you, we do need another command point here for for transport, and I just think just in itself, it's gonna be a little bit too too little. So. I would very much like to get this guy over here because he has a much higher mecha uh, shock value. It's sort of weird. Weirdly in the middle, I think. Yeah, so the 5.5 inch gun. That would be fantastic with the truck over here. It just seems that's not quite viable. So let's actually buy the one uh, with the truck over here, the mountain howitzer. And that's fine. And let's actually just deploy that. Go. Come move you this turn. So we are going to turn it over towards the enemy. Indian pushing up against this border position. So that's nice to see. Oh yeah, there's that Germanist tank still. Oh, they did destroy that. So that's lovely to see. Good. Let's see whether that is going to be um, counting towards my ability to read for tanks. I should also say the AI seems to be doing pretty well, I think, for the most part. Let's see what the uh, Thai and... Japanese positions are going to do. Ooh, ouch. So that's not very nice there. I do think they are not really constrained by the same um, considerations in terms of fork of war, but there's only so much. Well, that bombing rate, well, that it's is on the tide of it now. That's actually super useful for us. More aircraft buzzing about. And the Japanese are taking the ties over there as well. Gonna have to be mindful of this and this guy. But I think most important is that we do capture this area here. We are still supplying everyone, but kind of just only barely. So um, I do kind of wanna avoid that. Okay. Let's kill these guys. I think that should be relatively easy. I say so, and then we don't. You are over here. We've got this gentleman. I would ideally like to shoot down that aircraft there. And um, definitely want to destroy these guys. So that they are getting moving out. There they are, so that's nice to see. We've got the tank here. We could move up here and potentially down that aircraft, and that might be extremely useful. You'd be doing quite well over here, I think. So let's try to do that. Can you move in? Yeah, you can. Have the animation play here. 
And you're now fairly established over there, so that's nice. You could attack over here, but you wouldn't be really doing that great. Why is that? Are you fortified? Yeah, you are dug in. Six. We can't really bombard anyone yet, but we can certainly move up our units. And then next turn we'll be able to. So we could move over here. You all have attacked. If we move up over here, no, you're not supporting because you are facing another enemy unit. Okay, and you can see how just difficult it would be to attack right now uh, because they are dug in so well. So let's try to do our engineers first. Slosh their fortifications a little bit there. It's gonna be a bloody fight for us. Yeah, we're losing a significant amount of people over here, uh, but we are now on a, on a par level. With them, so I think attacking them there might be useful. Yeah, we are taking quite a bit of casualties, but I think all in all that's well justified still. Slightly concerned about them outflanking me, but I would really like to shoot down the aircraft. So let's try to do this. Go, yeah, fantastic. Good stuff. Let's turn our attention to the Australians. Um, definitely good attack over there, good attack opportunity. Um, you guys could also come up here and, and at least kill off a couple of these stranglers. We also need to be mindful of this position up here. You know, it's still not being pushed back. Let's try to do that with these guys. And now it's time to push back. And since we must really, I think, kill these guys, let's attack them this way and that way. Move up with you. That's fine. You are all good. I don't think we need to attack anywhere. I'm kind of fine where you are right now. Let's pull back a little bit, in fact. And that's all right. Good. End of turn. So you can see just how this develops. There are our allies. They are getting a little bit stuck, I feel. Just a tiny bit. Although they do have recon and they are killing off some units. So that's nice to see. But this position here, I think they will struggle. That is well fortified, it seems. Yeah, they are losing a little bit in the attack there. These guys are not quite up to where they need to be. Top of reinforcements. Yeah, and you're taking damage there. You're also causing some damage, but not much, so... Ties are mostly reinforcing here, and just trying to lift their wings. So yeah, but we must really try to to get these guys now. They're not really dug in anymore, and we do have the artillery here, so um, let's actually try to use the artillery. It's not so much about killing them, it's mostly about causing damage to them, um, and just having some shock effect there. I think that went relatively well. Who can have a very good attack plan over here? I think you are decent enough at this. So, good damage there. One damage on us. Not ideal, but still alright. You'd be very good at attacking here, so let's do that. Use them, and then we can move in. We're gonna actually move in with these guys, with the heavies. So that might not be the worst idea. And then this infantry over here, you cannot really advance. You could only advance up here. Well, this is still sort of for us, and I think we can kill these guys off, so that's nice to see. Yeah, let's do that. Fantastic. Good job over there. And then we've got these guys. I think, again, just reinforcing them to max strength seems to be a fine choice to me. Um, and then over here, so we could attack you. I'm tempted to see what the Japanese have got over there, uh, but I'm slightly mindful that we do need to... Okay, let's kill this guy off. Make sure that they don't. Ah, uh, they are still running around. Well, that's unfortunate. All right, and then we have got a couple infantry units here. Let's just move you off a little bit, and that's fine. Good. Next turn. Uh, no, 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 no. Of course we do. Ah, of course we do want to move the Australians. So 
But this is still no this difficult terrain. Okay, that I appreciate. Let's get into difficult terrain. I think that's my position for infantry to be in. Destroy these guys over there. You could move into the forest there, but you'd be losing a little bit of cohesion. But I still think that's preferable to anything else, so let's do that. Oh, and they did retreat, retreat onto the uh, river, so let's move up over here and just slaughter them in the river. Units in the river, so all on the river are extremely vulnerable, so uh, that was a very good move for us, at least from our perspective. Move up the AA, and that's fine. So, that being said, I think now would be... Uh, no, wait, we do have more units. Ah, we're right, these tanks. Um, well, we could move them up here, finish the job. Um, we could also try to move up here. Do a little bit more damage against these Thai divisions. Um, although I'm not sure we do really need to do so. Um, I think the Japanese are coming up down here. And we can definitely see them blobbing out that way. But... On the other hand, it might be nice to just advance over here and get a little bit better kill zone uh, set up over there in these... In these little huts over there. So, yeah, let's do move up over here. Not of anyone down there, if there's anyone. Call some damage up there, get some experience, that I think is fine. Good, and yeah, there might be a risk of someone flowing through here, but I think it's very minimal. These tie divisions are certainly quite isolated, and I think you will be capturing these areas over here, so that should be nice as well. Good. Right, so now is a good place to put in cup though, so do let me know what you think of this uh, game, whether you want me to continue it, I'm definitely going to finish up with this uh, scenario over here, um, but whether you'd like to see more, uh, whether you think that is something for our little channel over here, um, and yeah, looking forward to hear from you. Bye bye guys!